Today I'm going to be talking about the Overwatch PTR that came out yesterday, uh, which was November the 7th, from when I'm recording this, and um, just sort of talk through what kind of stuff I experienced. Just a heads up, I haven't, I still haven't actually had the chance to play Sombra in a public match, because obviously the hype is so fucking huge over her that everyone wants to play her, and everyone who can play her will just play her and won't switch even if they're terrible you know uh, i managed to play a little bit of her in some target practice but honestly it's obviously going to be nowhere near the same as playing her in a real match so I'm, i've played against her and i've figured out that me playing Junkrat is actually really really good counter to her i just managed to completely wipe her out every time I need to with Junkrat. He just seems to be really, really good at countering everything she can throw at me. Um, mainly kind of the Concussion Mine. The Concussion Mine's really good for just, if she teleports behind you or something, just turn around and throw it at her and then start shooting your normal grenades. Uh, it just seems to work really effectively because once she's used that dash, other than her inv invisibility, she can't really do much to escape a situation, especially if she's really close to you. And obviously with her invisibility as well, she um, as soon as she gets hit, then she's she just turns, she, you can see her again. So it's it's kind of, you know, if you've got the concussion mine or if you've got a trap next to you or something, as soon as she's hit, as soon as she takes any damage, she's visible and she's no longer, you know, much faster like she has an invisibility. So I feel like Junkrat's a really good counter to her. Um, that's my own personal experience anyway. I haven't tried out every single character. Um... And I will be uploading a video of Sombra gameplay when I get it. Um, I'm going to try again tonight, see if I can get on any servers with genuine people who I did have before, who were, you know, just role swapping and saying, you know, oh, we'll play a game of, I'll play Sombra and then you can play on the next game. And all this kind of stuff, because you do get genuine people like that, but then you obviously get the people who are obsessed with it and therefore you get the people who leave matches and force you to re-instance about 10 times to actually get a match going because people are so desperate to play Sombra that they just can't stand not playing her for, you know, five minutes while a match is going on or whatever, you know. So it is difficult when you have the, the these big releases and reveals like this because people just want to play it. And I, rec I don't know, maybe it would be like this for the first few weeks or something, but maybe it will die down quickly. So, on the note of trying out loads of characters, I played some of the um, the arcade modes. Um, well, I played all the ones that I felt were necessary. I didn't play uh, all the brawls, and I didn't play uh, the No Limits one, because those two have both technically... Well, obviously, the brawls is just the brawls that we've had before, and we know about brawls. So, it's nothing really special or new just kind of there it's just how it's been for a long time um and then the no limits is something you could do privately obviously now you can do it with uh, you know more frequently with more people because you can do it as a public server search but honestly it's just <laughs> six traces with unlimited i don't know just ridiculous matchups which can be fun i don't know you can do it as, as like a goof every now and then but you know, it doesn't really interest me that much. Um, so starting with 1v1 um, is really, really interesting gameplay, and I really love this map. This map is wicked. It's, it's really... Um, it's really tightly knit, and it's quite open but closed off at the same time. Obviously, you've got the obstructions in the way, and you've got the little interiors of buildings and stuff. But the main thing that I took away from it is how non-diverse my character ranges in terms of being good at them like i'm really good at well i i'm best at uh genji widowmaker junk rat and uh do you know what? <laughs> that's actually probably it that's how bad it is you know i'm not i'm pretty good at hanzo as well but i don't play hanzo as much anymore hanzo's uh he's like a weird mid-range sniper that i can sometimes find good useful but sometimes not I occasionally play like a really good a really good match with Anzo but it's not consistent at all it's not something that he's not a character that I'll always be first to choose you know 
um, despite the fact that I bought a demon skin for him recently, which is amazing. Brilliant, brilliant skin. But anyway, yeah, I just... Um, I the, the characters I played were, I think it was Torbjorn, Symmetra, um, Tor, Torbjorn, Reaper, Symmetra, Reinhardt, McCree, and Diva. And the only one I beat this guy on was Symmetra, and that's simply because I was just spamming him with left click. We were both spamming each other, and somehow my HP managed to stand up longer than his. That was it. That's the only reason why. I realised that all of these characters, except from Reinhardt, I've barely played at all. If at all. I just I just don't have this diverse range of characters that a lot, a lot of people do and should have. I really enjoyed playing McCree on um, a little while ago in a few different servers, but <laughs> all the others I just haven't done anything with. And um, it's a really interesting game. It's really cool. It's a really good concept. I like it because obviously all the characters are built to work in the team. So trying to pitch two of the exact same characters against each other is really, really interesting. You know, it's like there's no um, direct counter. Like if there were two different characters, there'd be no, you know, direct counters. Be like, oh, well, this character's really good against this character, so that was unfair. You know, you were bound to win that match. It's like, you know, you've got two of the exact same character. Whoever's best at playing that character wins. That's that's it, you know, that's the bottom line. And um, it just made me sit down and think, like, wow, I really, really need to start playing more diverse characters in this game. And I'm assuming that's what the goal was when they created this game mode. You know, it's really honed in my senses to start playing more characters now. I feel like in the coming, <laughs> in the coming weeks, I'm going to start trying to play every single character or the majority of the characters to a certain extent where I feel like I'd be confident if I was to randomly be, you know, picked to play as one of them, which currently I'm not, clearly. Um, I do really need to step up my game here, and I'm kind of happy that um, the, Overwatch, uh, the Overwatch development team have actually done this because now I'm thinking, right, I need to step up my game. I need to, do, I need to be better at all the characters. I need to be able to change on the fly as opposed to just one offensive, one defensive, you know, one uh, support and one tank. Like, I need to be able to play a lot of different characters. Because um, everyone's unique, obviously, and they all work in a team, but they all work in different ways. So I think that's what I took from 1v1. The game mode's really good. It's really, really cleverly made. Um, and I really enjoyed playing it. It was a lot of fun, but I was just getting my ass kicked the whole time. Um... So yeah, that I reckon that sort of, that sums up one v one. I was quite happy with that. Um, so next was the elimination three v three. That I liked a lot as well. That was good. That was it's just uh, it feels even if you're not playing with people you've got communication with or people who are your friends, it feels like a lot more of a um, like a like a friends v friends kind of thing. It feels like you've got more of a tightly knit team on your side. Having just three people makes you think a little bit more about your character selection. Um, obviously the rounds are a lot shorter as well because there's no other objectives other than to kill each other. It's elimination, it's like, you know, that's what it is. But it's just really, it's really interesting. It's a very, very interesting game mode where, you know, you, I'm scrubbing through the footage as I'm talking about this. I'm trying to, you know, find better ways to analyze what I'm saying but again it, it, it did kind of make me think about character selection again but not as much obviously because like I said before having 1v1 pitched with the same character against each other makes you realize how good or bad you are at it but this game mode also makes you think about it because choosing a character for a smaller team as well is like are you like you know is there any point in having a healer at the moment unless you have like um a pocket for two people or a AOE like Lucio just following everyone around and trying to keep himself alive or is it better to just go all DPS or you know all tank or you know anything that you would want to do I feel that it allows you to have a little bit more freedom but also a little bit more um it makes you analyze what you're doing a little bit more it makes you think about what would be the best strategy for killing the enemy team on top of this, though, you have to also consider that 
when you're doing this elimination round, if, say, both the other people on your team um, get killed, then you have to know that you will be able to survive to survive the enemy team on your own. You need to be able to choose a character that's good enough to work in a small team, assisting everyone else or protecting everyone else or just, you know, being able to kill the enemy, but also being able to do that on your own and not having to rely on other people. So, and it's a very, the very quick rounds, but you still have to think about all of this at the same time. You have to think, what would be the best strategy? Will I need someone who's going to be able to move around a lot? Will I need someone who's going to be quite situated, but will also be able to do a lot of damage? Will I need to be uh, supporting my teammates? You know, you need to think about all these different things just for, you know, what could be a five minute round, if that, or five minute match even, sorry. The rounds are really, really quick, you know. So the third one I played was Mystery Heroes. Mystery Heroes is um, cool as well, and I, I didn't... Maybe, obviously, I only played the, the one match of Mystery Heroes, but um, you get a randomly picked character at the start of the match, and then um, I don't know if it only switches once again or something. It only did for me, but maybe, like, every time you try and select a hero, it switches or something. I don't know, but it randomizes your character, basically, and you end up playing with a team of people who have no idea what they're going to be playing, and you have to quickly think. You have to adapt to what you know what um could possibly happen you know how are we going to make this team work now and obviously the enemy team is going to be exactly the same they're going to be very confused about you know what strategies to conjure up really really quickly before the match starts to try and figure out how to make the team work and it's really it's a, it's a lot of fun i really enjoyed this actually this was a lot of fun I um, started out as Reinhardt, and then I think after my first or second death, it switched me to McCree. And uh, I play quite a lot of Reinhardt. Reinhardt's um, my go-to tank other than Roadhog. I think they're both about even for me. I, I like them both a lot. Um, but playing McCree as well, like with the 1v1, I haven't really played much McCree. And I kind of like him, actually. I, I, never th I never really took the time out to try him enough. To decide whether I did like him or not, but I kind of enjoy him. He's um, he's a bit more of an agile semi sniper type when he needs to be as well. Like he can do some really good long range, um, with his revolver because it's an incredible weapon. You know, it's a really really good, really accurate weapon. Um, I haven't kind of got down the um, you know, sort of the combinations like rolling and fan the hammer, like when you reload and stuff. I know that that got nerfed at some point but it's still good and even just being able to stun people reload and headshot you know just little um key elements to playing mccree i haven't really nailed them yet i haven't got quite there um but you know this is uh something that this game mode is something that people you know people have done like just casually before but obviously now it's automated so some people will just be like oh we'll just choose a random hero do like an RNG or something and just randomly pick heroes for everyone, which is a lot of fun to do, but obviously this is all made now. It's a game mode, it's in the arcade section. It's kind of another way of being able to hone in your senses with each hero as well, I think. Um, similar to 1v1, um, where you just get thrown into the situation. They're like, right, okay, this is who you're going to play today. And, you know you can either stick with it or you can randomize again or whatever i'm not sure how the mechanics work 100 percent. i haven't actually played more than one game i only had time to do one last night um so you know they sort of throw you into the situation they're like right you've got to know how to play this person you've got to know how to be able to uh attempt to you know beat everyone else on the enemy team no matter what they are because they don't know what they are either you know they're they're everyone's as clueless as each other and it's really really it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to be thrown in at the deep end with these kind of things 1v1 and uh, mystery heroes are my two favorites obviously i like elimination but it doesn't make you think about what you're doing as much as these other two game modes i think they're very in terms of heroes anyway um <clears throat> it makes me want to practice more on players like mccree um and no, actually, yeah, no, probably just McCurry at the moment. I, I just, I really like McCurry. I really enjoy playing this round. I don't, I don't think I did too well. 
like at all I was pretty goddamn terrible, but I really enjoy playing him, you know. But even that, even just that is such a nice thing to have. It's nice to be able to realise that Okay, now I want to try and play this character. Now I actually want to try and get good with McCree. I, I think that I might be able to play McCree really well. I might be able to adapt to using his playstyle more than just playing him every now and then or not even playing him at all and just, you know, trying to acknowledge... Um, the skill of other people playing McCree as opposed to honing in my own senses and then being able to pinpoint what people are doing and what I'm doing and what I can improve on and what other people did really well or did wrong that I can sort of analyse. I think Arcade Mode has brought some really interesting cards to the table and it's really... What's the word I'm looking for? I'd probably say unique. I think unique's probably a really good word where it's just... These game modes are nothing like what we've had before you know 1v1 is such an uh it's, it's a concept that obviously people have done with private matches again but the fact that it's the same hero on both sides and the fact that you have to be better at playing the hero than the other person you can't tell that until you've won or lost and it gets randomized every time as well it's 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 very very unique very exciting very i'm glad i got um i'm glad i've played uh the ptr last night i it's just a lot of fun it's really cool to be able to test out these new features you know i had a few um bugs here and there but it's like what you're meant to expect like you know what else is going to happen when you've got a you know a public test going on you know there's no there's no issue with having bugs issues uh, crashes and server overloads especially server overloads because they were bound to happen everyone knew they were going to happen it's just a matter of time to see how long, you know, you'd be able to last before getting reinstanced or getting, you know, just getting chucked around and get people, have people leaving and have the server crash and put you in 2,000 person queue. You know, um, it's good. I like it. I'm very, I'm very happy with this update. I think this update is going to bring some really interesting plays to the Overwatch community. Some really interesting. Um, you know, differentiation between players and characters, uh, which will hopefully help people improve and will hope help people get the hang of more characters, get the get better at the game in general. Because when you have people like me who play such a small raster of heroes, it kind of makes me. I, I can play. Obviously, I play across the board in terms of what spec they are, like whether it be DPS, defensive, um, tank, or healer. I play at least one person from every single one of those, but it's still not enough when you've got, you know, more than 20 heroes to choose from. It'd be really interesting to see how much better people, how much more diverse people will become and gamers will become. And when, you know, when Overwatch League becomes a bigger thing, that will, that will boost it even more. They've, they've managed, with this update, they've managed to coincide two or, th you know, multiple different um, factors that will really benefit the community and their own gameplay. We'll just make the Overwatch community a lot more flexible and gamers a lot more flexible in this field. I just wanted to have another quick uh, mention about Sombra. Um, again, like I say, I haven't had the chance to properly play her yet. She plays pretty smoothly. She's, uh, I think she's pretty well balanced, actually. I, I think that she's pretty well balanced um, in general. But I'll give more of a commentary and feedback on that once I've played a few matches. Hopefully tonight. Hopefully I'll be able to get into some matches tonight and actually play her. Um, but the skins that she has are really, really brilliant. I think they're um, obviously Sombra. Sombra as a um, as a, as a character looks amazing already. She's got this awesome, you know, purple and blue kind of theme going on and black actually. But her skins are all really really you know vibrant neon colors which is such a wicked wrestler to have which means that obviously you've got the ones that change her like whole appearance and her dress code and stuff like with the um, epics and legendaries but even the um the rares are nice like uh noche is really awesome I, I really want that skin it's only 75 credits i might just buy it at some point if i get the chance to 
player and I like and you know I just really want to be able to invest something into the character and make her look brilliant that is just that color scheme is wicked the red white and black and the sort of gold highlights looks amazing it's really really good and I think that her um her appearance in general is just really really uh vibrant and unique it's, it's wicked it reminds me kind of Genji with the, with his like green neon highlights and stuff they're really cool they, it just all makes her look really incredible so that about wraps it up for this video for now um like i say i'm gonna have a better um analysis of sombra uploaded probably in the next few days um when i get the chance to play her properly but for now you know with these new game modes i feel like this has been a an in-depth enough um personal opinion and analysis of these game modes and i think that you know uh blizzard and the overwatch team are really taking a step in the right direction with this kind of gameplay so i'm still going to be uploading overwatch matches when i you know when i get some good matches i'm going to be uploading them um on a scheduled basis i'm just going to be doing some random stuff with pabs hopefully some more of that soon um maybe some more water walker off chat so yeah share it around let everyone know uh get people together you know, I'm still going to be making videos. I hopefully it won't drop out this time. I don't think there's going to be anything to stop me. Um, Pabs is really, really, really happy about me starting to make videos again. You know, he's encouraging me to make videos. And he's always saying that we should have gaming sessions so we can record and upload. And it's really nice to be able to have that kind of enthusiasm and positivity around me. So stay tuned for the next video probably be more overwatch matches or it'll be something to do with pabs as he's uh, basically stealing my channel that was a joke man i'm really sorry about that was actually a joke i didn't really mean that that was that wasn't very nice I, i'm really sorry about that